Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So Arrow and The Flash have continued to make a lot of casting announcements in the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to do a villain's power ranking. This will just be for Arrow season three. I'm gonna do a separate video for The Flash eventually and I'll do a hero power ranking too. The newest villain is Komodo. He's gonna be played by Matt Ward. You might remember him from Tron Legacy. He was cast as Simon LaCroix, but in the comics, LaCroix is Komodo. That's why we say Matt Ward is Komodo. Think of it in terms of Batman. His real mask, you know, his alter ego is Bruce Wayne. Inside, he's really that Dark Knight character. Arrow Season 3 is going to refer to most of these villains by their real life personas, with the exception of Ra's al Ghul. He has no alter ego, unless you want to consider the demon's head his alter ego. He's really the same person no matter who he's talking to though. There's no secret identity. This power ranking is going to start off with the least powerful to most powerful, beginning with Manhunter. This is the Mark Shaw Manhunter, not Martian Manhunter, the one who's associated with Suicide Squad in the comics. He's going to be part of a Diggle Amanda Waller story, so I'm guessing he's not a flashback character. Remember, some of the people that they've cast are only going to appear in the Hong Kong flashbacks, and some will only appear in present day, but there are a couple that will cross over. I know it gets a little confusing if you read the comics because the current Manhunter is Kate Spencer which actually gives me some interesting theories about what they're going to do with Laurel this season. Mark Shaw, though, was originally a public defender who was trained by a secret society called the Manhunters. He joined so that he'd be able to fight crime in a more effective way. Like Frank Castle becoming the Punisher. And just like the Punisher, Shaw eventually went a little bit nuts and started to go over the line, like way over the line, which is pretty much why I put him on the list. You know, even if he's neutral or just a little bit bad, he's going to be on the bad list. It's a really interesting point. You know, yes, you can be a villain even if you're not trying to be evil. Think of Shaw as more of a character that wandered off the path, at least in the comics, which is probably how Arrow's going to treat him. Usually doing something like that will land you in an Argus prison. On the show, he's going to be going up against Diggle in a Suicide Squad episode. In the New 52 comics, the big reboot, Shaw is a US Marshal. Still questionable morality, so I'm kind of curious to see if Arrow does a mix and match thing where they give Laurel some of the aspects like the Kate Spencer Manhunter blended with Shaw's Hunter in the old comics. Like I don't think that Shaw's going to wear a Manhunter costume, but I am curious to see if they give Laurel some of his traits. Think about it this way, Laurel works in the DA's office. She's going to be training to fight this season, either with Wildcat or Oliver, probably both though. What if they have an episode where she tries to dispense her own kind of personal justice? kind of combining the original Mark Shaw Manhunter with the Kate Spencer Manhunter. Remember, Kate Spencer was also a federal prosecutor in the comics, which is kind of close to what Laurel does. I'm not expecting it to happen, and I don't think Laurel's going to be wearing any kind of costumes, and obviously we all want her to become Black Canary at some point, but keep your eyes peeled for Laurel kicking butt in a non-Black Canary way. So increasing the threat level just a little, next is Thea Queen. I'm not going to call her straight up Artemis, but I think the show is pushing her in that direction. I know a lot of you guys want her to be Lady Shiva, but think more of Artemis in Young Justice. You know, only is more of an antagonist to Team Arrow. Like Willa Han's gonna be a crankier version of Artemis. She and Colton Haynes actually posted this picture from the set. You can see the new short haircut that she's sporting, and she also posted pictures from her training in the gym. The show is still pairing her off with Roy, like she'll get scenes with Roy, but technically she's on Team Merlin, which makes her a villain. I know a lot of you might not be totally convinced that Thea could ever be a threat to Roy, but remember, Thea was a champion archer, and Merlin has the wisdom of the League of Assassins. Think of it in terms of training ability. I think that Merlin will be a better trainer to Thea than Oliver will be to Roy. I know that might sound controversial. Merlin was trained by Ra's al Ghul, who I think is more powerful than Slade. Yes, Oliver did get some good training from Slade, so I don't necessarily think that Merlin is a way better fighter than him. I just think that he's a better teacher than he is. Like even as high as Oliver's writing, he's still not quite at that level of maturity as he is whenever he joins Justice League. But some of the most fun this season that I'm looking forward to is watching Merlin train Thea and watching Oliver train Roy. It's going to be so much fun, especially whenever Thea goes up against Roy and starts kicking his butt. Climbing up the ladder a little further, we have Deadshot. Michael Rowe is returning in a Suicide Squad episode. I'm expecting to see him more than once. There's going to be at least one special dedicated Suicide Squad episode, but they sometimes get cameos in other episodes, like smaller stories. So also, I didn't put her on the list just because it's not confirmed, but supposedly Harley Quinn will have a full-on cameo in Season 3, obviously as part of the Suicide Squad episode. Like a cameo that actually makes it to air. Whenever Cassidy Alexa did her last season, they had that super short teaser in the Suicide Squad episode, and then another cameo that she was in in the finale, but both those got left on the cutting room floor, like they were cut out at the last minute before the episodes aired. Before they started filming, Stephen Amell made it pretty clear that he thought that Harley Quinn was a really cool idea for the show. And yes, you know, he doesn't call all the shots, but don't be surprised if you see Harley Quinn in an actual episode. 
But moving along, just above Deadshot, I put Komodo. He was a huge Green Arrow villain in the New 52 comics. He's connected to Oliver's father, and he even worked inside Queen Industries. I don't know how the show is going to change him from the comics, but he could potentially show up in flashbacks and in present day. Like in the comics, he had a beef against Oliver, but he's also connected to Count Vertigo. So when we do see him in the present day, he'll probably have something to do with Count Vertigo's plot. There was a story from the comics where he kidnapped Shadow's daughter and helped Vertigo, so he might end up kidnapping or trying to kidnap Felicity or Laurel. Since Laurel's supposedly going to be in training this season either with Wildcat or Oliver, it'd be nice to see her actually go up against Komodo or take him down. That'd be a really awesome moment for her. They would have to depower him just a little since his comic book version is supposed to be just as formidable as Oliver. And I don't think that Laurel is going to be as good as Oliver this season. Like she's not going to get that good that fast. So now we're starting to move up into like the supervillain stratosphere. So next is Talia al Ghul. She's coming back with the Ra's al Ghul League of Assassins stories or episodes that feature the League at least. Black Canary is only back for three episodes this season, so I'm expecting Talia to show up in one of those. In terms of fighting ability, I rank her like just below Oliver, just because she was able to fight him to a standstill in hand-to-hand -hand combat and with a bow and arrow. Still, Oliver is way stronger just from his sheer size. Some of these upper level characters are better than each other under certain conditions, like each of them has their own specialties. Talia is way more vicious than Oliver and Merlin, for instance, but both of them are stronger. So a lot of times it just depends on what the conditions of the fight are. So moving up to number three, Amanda Waller. Yes, I am considering her a villain for this season. She's neutral really, but the way Arrow uses her is mostly as an antagonist. She really only helps Team Arrow when she's forced to or when it suits her. Remember, even if you're just a little bit evil, you can be considered a villain. Villains can still totally do good things and continue to be villains, just like Merlin. I'm expecting Waller to give off like a really evil vibe in the flashbacks. She's clearly keeping Oliver there against his wishes, forcing him to help her. I know everyone's wondering how he ended up back on the island in the pilot, especially with that giant beard. It supposedly came after Hong Kong, probably because he and Waller had a falling out. I'm hoping that the flashbacks this season explain their relationship a little bit better. So up to number two now, Malcolm Merlin, who is nothing like John Barrowman in real life. Stephen Amell said that the biggest prankster on the Arrow set is John Barrowman. I love the idea that Malcolm Merlin is like the consummate prankster, like he's the Tom Hiddleston Loki of the series, so he gets to be bad and good. I think that Merlin is a neutral figure, but I think he swings chaotic neutral or lawful neutral depending on the situation. Like when he's training Thea, he'll be lawful neutral, and when he's trying to confound Team Arrow, he'll be chaotic neutral. I'm also kind of wondering if Merlin's going to try and play Team Arrow against Ra's al Ghul. Like use them as a distraction, or better yet, use Team Arrow as a human shield against the League of Assassins. Remember, Merlin is on Ra's al Ghul's shit list. So it's totally possible that Oliver and Merlin could continue to be villains throughout the entire season, but at some point, Oliver could wind up fighting with Merlin against Ra's al Ghul. Stephen Amell has said that Oliver and Merlin will always have unfinished business, you know, mostly referring to Tommy in the Earthshaker, but Ra's al Ghul is like the one thing that could put that fight on hold. So let me know, big questions. Number one, do you want to see Oliver and Merlin get like a big throwdown? And number two, do you want to see them fight together against Ra's al Ghul? Which of course leads me to my most powerful villain this season, the Demon's Head. My big question with him is, is what is so compelling that he will leave Nana Parbat to go to Starling? Think about it this way, usually what you see is, by the end of the season, all the villain's stories tied together. So Ra's al Ghul will be in Starling because of something Black Canary does, something Merlin does, and something that Vertigo does. That doesn't include any interaction between Ray Palmer's story or any of the other heroes coming to the show, but I'll try and address that whenever I do my hero power rankings. Ideally, what you want to see by the end of the season is, is like all the new characters have some sort of connection in some way, like all the different stories all tied together. Those like a focal point, but be sure to subscribe to get that video. I'll try and post it next week. Quick update on Friday and Saturday videos too. There's lots of stuff happening. Legend of Korra season finale will be streaming on Nickelodeon tomorrow for free, so be sure to watch it. I'll post my video afterwards, and Doctor Who Series 8 Episode 1 on Saturday. So lots of big videos, I probably will not sleep, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll also be live tweeting a lot of stuff, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Awesome Emergency, and on Facebook it's just, you know, slash Facebook. But in the meantime, while you guys are getting ready, click here to learn all about Justice League Dark, and click here to get my big Marvel Avengers Phase 3 Q&A. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, high fives.